Are you looking for a long-term office chair on a budget? Then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to an episode of Quirky Products Review. We are a channel that reviews products from common to the quirkiest. And we share our product experiences and opinions so that you can become the savvy informed consumer. If you like our content, please hit that red subscribe button below the video as well as the notification bell to catch our latest content. Smash the thumbs up button if you want to save this content on your playlist. Thank you and now back to the episode. Hello my fellow savvy YouTubers. Today is the first Saturday of March 2020. Welcome to a special episode of a product that has been with me for a long time. As a note, all the prices that I'll mention in this episode are in the currency of the US dollar. You might be wondering why I'm showing you this worn out office chair. No, my butt didn't tear this apart. Okay, maybe. I lost track because I've had this chair since the spring of 2013. And as I am recording this video, it is now end of February 2020. So it is almost a shade under seven full years. I will go in depth on this chair that I paid $100 almost seven years ago and share my experience how this chair lasted so long and survived two moves with me. In 2013, I was in search of a comfortable and affordable office chair instead of a regular foldable chair since I was spending more time in front of my computer. I wanted something with a lower budget, and I wasn't willing to buy something fancy since I was staying at a place that I rented. I knew eventually, as I changed jobs and locations, it wouldn't be ideal to buy something for long term because moving process can cause some wear and tear. At the time, I shopped around the web, such as Amazon, and didn't feel confident to pull the trigger since I couldn't try the chairs before purchasing, nor was I able to see the physical product, only in the context of pictures and, if lucky, videos. I targeted a couple of websites that sold office chairs and f had physical brick and mortar stores. These stores were Office Depot and Office Max. What I found was that anything piquing my interest were at least $200 and above. And these chairs piqued my interest by the comfort and thickness of the cushion, not by the actual design, because they all looked very traditional. The ones that would complement rustic redwood furnishings that you would find in a doctor's or lawyer's office. To find a more modern style, I visited Target and found the price and the quality of the product were difficult to match. For over $100 at the time, the office chairs available for sale were small and seemed more fitting for a college dorm room than my apartment. This current chair was stumbled upon by accident. One weekend while grabbing groceries, I stumbled upon a sample office chair that was sitting in the middle of the office supply aisle at my local Costco. The empty seat seemed to beckon for me, which led to my surprise of its comfort and acceptable physical appearance. I found it agreeable and saw the price, $99.99 before taxes. I was content that I found something I liked and with a reasonable budget. The only tough part was moving the whole thing in a large box that barely fit my Honda Civic at the time. Fortuitously, it was able to fit in the back seat. In regards to design, as I was unboxing this chair at home, I found something very peculiar and convenient. It came in three main large pieces, the seat, the base, and the center hydraulic pole. The auxiliary pieces were the five wheels, the hydraulic pole plastic cover, and the armrests. The assembling of the seat was what grabbed my attention. After screwing the armrest into their designated location, the backrest and the seat cushion were already assembled as one piece. All I had to do was unfold the backrest, lift it upright, and hear the click of two metal pins pop into their rifle places in the armrest. After adding the five wheels to the base, I simply stacked the center pole onto the base and stacked the seat on top of the center pole. And with about five minutes, the assembly was complete. I was stunned at the simplicity and streamlined process. It took more time to unbox and unwrap all the plastic covers than it took to assemble the chair. 
In regards to mechanism and how this chair operates, the design really focused on simplicity. There is only one lever below the chair. When pulled upwards, if I am seated in the chair, the chair will lower. If the seat is empty or not holding weight, the pull lever would elevate the chair higher. The lever can also be pushed inwards toward the center of the pole to lock the backrest from leaning backwards. When pulled outwards, the backrest can freely lean backwards. Another feature in the design is that there is a layer of breathable cushion that runs along the woven seams as well as the porous holes on certain patches of the leather, such as the backrest and seat cushion. This allows for heat dissipation. With these ventilation design, there were still times that the synthetic leather became sticky and hot during long sitting sessions, particularly in the summer months. However, the ventilation cooled the chair and the leather much faster after I left the chair. Overall, the quality of the office chair is solid. I have never had this chair buckle under me, especially during my adjustments of the height of the seat. The leather is synthetic, as the current cracking is evidence that the skin oil has done its damage over time. I would say the leather lasted all the way up to the sixth year before the disintegration began. The balance of weight, the speed of spinning on the chair did not have any observed abnormalities. I will add that this chair has surprised me on its duration and lasted this long with me. Since 2013, I've made two moves and had consistent daily usage. Other than vacations, my butt has been in this seat every day for a good span of an hour minimum per day. I made one move in the spring of 2016 to another city, and this chair for its price was sturdy enough to transport medium-sized boxes from my apartment to the U-Haul truck. Then in early 2018, I moved from one place to another and this chair was still going strong. With every product, there are always room for improvement. By mentioning the pros and the cons, potential customers can receive a fuller truth and not just part of the truth. Impartiality is the goal. The most obvious shortcoming is that the backrest of the seat is too short and lacks a higher headrest. I usually end up resting my head at the top of the backrest. This part feels weird because this is the part where the cushion ends and the hard material of the backrest support meet. To compensate and allow my head to be able to rest on the more cushioned area, I would slide downwards towards the edge of the seat, hence adding weight to the front piece of the chair that is sewed by the seam. Now we can understand why the seam has loosened and broke. I ended up getting a foot rest and this enticed me even more to slide forward to get more cushion for the headrest and place more weight on the front edge of the chair, accelerating the disintegration of the seam. Another area is that non-adjustable armrest. I will say that the height is acceptable. The design team have calculated the height of the armrest to be proportional to the average person using this chair. It would be nice for the user to customize the armrest height. The cushion on the armrest is also too small. For those who have more girth to their arms, the cushions provide subpar comfort and are too narrow and lacks enough plush in the cushions. I couldn't recall the brand of this chair since I never took any pictures of the box or videos of the unboxing. I did find this sticker on the bottom of the chair and decided to surf their website called True Innovations. What I found, no doubt, is their signature design and there are now updated chairs that still share commonalities and distinct characteristics with my chair. The current design that comes closest to the one that I have is a Serta Manager Chair. If you are in the market for an officer that doesn't break the piggy bank, you want to give them a look. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that their website sells the products directly. You may have to find their products through a retailer. Overall, this is a solid chair on a budget. The other day while shopping at Costco, I found the most current office chairs sold at the Costco stores, and now they are around $200, maybe less. Comparing this price in 2020 with the $100 in 2013, clearly not just inflation has been increasing, possibly labor fees as well. I recently gave the current Costco chair a try at the store and found the experience almost identical to the one that I have worn out. Hopefully, if you do decide to invest your money in a Costco office chair, it will last you just as long as mine has. Leave a comment below and let me know if you had a chair that lasted this long or longer and did you have an overall positive experience with it. 
Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you found this content insightful. And subscribe to our channel if you want to see what my next studio chair will be. It will be a good surprise. Thanks again for watching. Until the next episode, stay savvy, my friends. Thank you.